Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Finch's Flight. In the last episode, we finally returned to the Feather Colony to try to track down a safe place to hunt down all of these frogs and toads for Griffin. We did come across a pretty promising location, but unfortunately we're going to have to fight our way through the Mystic Colony in order to get to it. We were planning on just using those swamp lands as a place to gather our frogs, but it turns out this purry corner is actually pretty darn good too. So since it's so close to our territory anyways, I think we're going to take some lavender down here, maybe poke our heads into this battle as well, and see if we can take control of the purry corner entirely. That way we'll have plenty of frogs to give to him in the future. As it is right now, we only have this tiny stash, maybe one little toad for Finch to munch on when we go give him these frogs. And we certainly need a lot more where that came from if we want to eventually invite Griffin to live in our den. After all, the moles have finished the garden upgrade. Finch wanted to put this together so Griffin would feel a little more comfortable here. He'll have a place to tend to all of his snake lilies inside the den. And maybe Finch could even try his hand at gardening? Now to be honest, even though Finch has a completely full part in foraging, I feel like this is about where his skill with plants ends. For that matter, we have quite a few experience points. Now should we put that into our active skills? Or should we maybe put it into hunting? If Finch is going to be going out hunting more frogs, maybe that would be a good idea. It'll make it a little bit more likely for him to actually get them when he pounces. I do want to focus on our swimming skill too at some point, because there are some secrets that we can find at the edge of the map if we have a full swimming ability. But we're going to have to ask Slate if she wouldn't mind teaching us how to swim a bit better, because Finch also needs help in that area too. But yeah, as far as the garden goes... I wonder if maybe he would ask for some pointers. Maybe he would really like to plant some snake lilies in there for when Griffin comes, but he's not really sure how to do it. So Galen, I think we're going to have to ask you for some pointers here. I can't see Finch wanting to ask Griffin himself. He probably wants to keep it a secret. So let's hope that Galen doesn't let it slip either. Galen can be a pretty secretive cat, so I think he's going to be just fine keeping our secret locked down for us too. Spring waters flow strongly from the mountains to the sea. Nature works extra hard in the warm months and rests in the cold season. Ah, it's almost as if you could take that as some gardening advice. Maybe he's just trying to make sure that Finch doesn't forget to water his plants. How can this wisdom be applied to our lives? Yeah, Finch, it sounds like he's giving you some pretty basic pointers. He knows that you're just a newbie when it comes to gardening yourself. So maybe it would be a good idea for us to plant the golden seals first? I feel like these would probably be the easiest for him to grow. Maybe that's what Galen would tell him too. Try something easy before you jump into your beloved parries, before you try to grow any snake lilies. Those I would imagine would be pretty hard for anybody to grow. And you know, Mango's doing pretty good with her lavender too. We could scoop up some of these to take over to the prairie. I'm sure she won't mind. That's kind of why she's growing these over here anyways. I kind of consider Mango to be Galen's apprentice too. I wonder if she'll have anything extra to tell us. It's a good day to chat with a good friend. Oh, she always does love it when we stop by. Well, thank you for the lavender, Mango. And we're going to bypass Griffin for the moment, just so we can talk to all of the other cats in the colony first. Then we'll stop by with all of our froggy gifts, of course. That way Finch will have a nice full belly before he leaves. So anything new from Starling today? Finch, you're very easy to talk to, and I mean that. I think he actually told us this the other day, didn't he? Yeah, it seems like Starling really enjoys his morning talks with his brother, too. You know, we do actually have a crow in our pocket, so maybe we'll go ahead and give this to him. He could use those feathers in all of his art projects, of course, which is why he loves them so much. Now, as for you, Slate, I have a pretty big, juicy hair for you. A nice big rabbit. She actually came to our rescue the other day, so I wanted to make sure that we had a good gift to give her. Hi there, Finch. Where are you off to in such a hurry? I'm really glad to call you my friend, Finch. You're such a sweetheart, you know. Oh, she told us this the other day, too. You know, it's really nice that she appreciates us so much. She knows what we're doing to make sure that she has a comfortable life here. And it's also nice to know that she has our back through thick and thin. 
Claudius, you have raised a wonderful daughter. There is a careful balance that must be struck between accessibility and security. So Claudius is thinking about the security of our colony again. And rightfully so, too, because I did also notice that the mountain colony seems to be pushing into our territory again. Maybe we ought to take a couple pieces of our lavender up here. I don't like them getting so close to our highlands after all. We'll just spread a little bit of our influence around that area before we go down to the prairie. Now, last but not least, as we stumble over to Griffin's Den, starving, of course, it's almost as if we've missed breakfast. He is going to be very, very happy to see all of these frogs in our inventory. So here you go, Griffin. One frog, two frogs, and last but not least, three frogs. And it looks like we gained the green heart with him for all of those frogs, too. So we are getting a little bit closer to finally winning over his heart. Hey, if I've ever got a scowl on my face or whatever, don't think that it's because of you. I'm always happy to see you. It's just kind of my default setting, you know? Oh, I know, Griffin. People who have those arresting, like, grumpy faces. I guess that fits Griffin to a T. Well, let's go ahead and munch on our frog, then. That way, Finch will be feeling a little bit better. Then before we leave, let's just see if he can paw around at the garden for a little bit and place some of those golden seals into the ground. We'll have to keep our eyes out for more of these while we're wandering around too. Maybe we could have an entire garden full of golden seals until he gets a little bit more skilled. Let's see if I can remember how to do this as well. Add a new plant, and then it costs six golden seals to place one of these in the ground. It works out well though because these will continue growing all year round, so that means we'll have a way to heal ourselves too once it gets too cold for them to grow outside. I'm sure that Galen would be very, very happy that we're being so proactive, especially in the springtime. We have a long way to go before it gets too cold for any of our herbs to grow, but if we get started now, we are going to have an amazing stockpile once the winter finally comes. Ooh, and licorice roots too? You know, I almost forgot how much Finch loves his licorice roots. When he was a little kitten, he used to make licorice root forts for all of his frogs, all the little frogs that his mother would catch for him. So he's got his eyes out for those as well. Now let's scoot on over to this tile, the Highland Northwest. We'll grab some of those extra herbs, and then I guess we'll spread a couple of our lavenders around here. I don't want to use them all, but we do want to make sure that the mountain colony doesn't have higher influence than us, because that is going to be disastrous. That would leave them quite the opening to charge into our territory, and we have to make sure that we're widening our control if we want to think about kittens in the future. Now off we go, Griffin. We're not going to waste our time with any measly mice. But the black hairs might be another story. If we could grab this for sleep, there we go. Easy peasy. She's going to be a very happy kitty indeed. And I'm sure she'll be even more likely to help us out if we need her. So those black hairs are a must. And I mean, if the bunnies are just going to run into the cliffside, so we might as well scoop them up too. Jeez, they are everywhere today. I guess it's just the blessings of springtime. All the bunnies are coming out to scavenge for food. And there is certainly plenty of food for them to eat out here. It must remind Finch of his father as well, because of course Scout loved his bunnies. Penny always had a gift of bunnies for Scout too. Maybe he's even thinking about going to visit his father in the future? I think we still have? Oh, we are so close to having a good enough reputation with the forest colony. I guess it's because we've been away for so long. So if we go into their borders, they might attack us, but all we have to do is offer up one gift to Sarge and they'll be back on our side before long. Now we're in the Prairie West? Yeah, I think it was the Prairie Corner that we wanted to keep under our control. I'm pretty sure that's where all the frogs were located. No, we don't want those mice. We want the big rabbit right here. Oh no, Finch, you scared it away! Well, that one's going to have to go off to a different land then. We're not going to chase it down. Let's go ahead and spread our lavender right here at the prairie corner. Let's take the whole thing over entirely. Now creep around for a moment and see if you can find any frogs. There's a squirrel up there that I'm going to scare away for now. Another squirrel here too. Oh, this has to be the place though. Look at all this water. 
Where could the frogs be hiding? There's one. Oh, right behind the tree. Let's see if we can snag this one up from behind. Just we have something to give to Griffin. Something to show for all of our hard work. I guess maybe we'll have to pick off one of the smaller morsels too. Just to make sure that Finch has enough energy for this next battle. Or not. Clearly the mouse heard me. This is why we really need to increase Finch's hunting skill. It would make it even easier for us to pick off prey on the mini-map. Yeah, there's a lot of mice out today. I wonder if it's just because there are no battles out here? It almost seems like the frogs are attracted to battles with how many we saw the day before. Well, go ahead and munch on the mice that you do have. And then I guess it's time for you to sneak into the battle. Ooh, but one more frog for good luck. Here they come, marching from the side of the screen too. Tell me it didn't run away. Oh no, I think it hopped right off the screen. We're too close to the edge. Well, that's okay, Finch. Surely that's not a bad omen for the battle. You have all of your skills at the ready anyways, and it looks like you have some cats on your side. Yeah, let's use our deep cuts ability. Oh geez, are there more coming from the back? Did you see that slimy? Oh, that slimy, slimy cat. He came charging in from behind all of our warriors. Now Hunter's coming in from across the stream, and I think I saw Slimy disappear. Did he run away? I know we didn't take him down, so we must have hurt him too much. Well, I think we can take care of Hunter on our own. Oh yeah, he's barely hitting us too. I guess Hunter hasn't trained enough for the battle. We definitely have more power on our side. Oh, and this is where the catnip is. No wonder the Mystic Colony was over here. Of course they would want to keep the catnip under their control. Well, to be honest, we could probably offer up that catnip to the Oracle, because I'm sure she would appreciate that as a good gift for the colony. We won't bother healing ourselves since we're going to go back to sleep anyways, but I just want to see what else might be up here. Ah, the licorice roots, of course. And one last dove to hopefully give to Starling when we wake up in the morning. There we go. So go ahead and warp back home. You did an excellent job, Day Finch. We have secured the prairie corner. And it looks like we have pretty much secured the pathway to the sacred temple too. Just in time for the upcoming festival. So go ahead and curl up for a nice good rest. He didn't actually get to sleep in the last episode. Oh my gosh. Heavy rain, no kidding! Oh, it is pelting off of your den, Finch. Good thing you got your battles out of the way. And you know, I guess today would probably be a good day for us to finish up hunting down all of our frogs, too. Something tells me they are going to be enjoying the rain. So how's your first golden seal coming along? Hopefully it's growing well. I'm not sure how many days it takes for golden seals to grow. But like I said, I would imagine that this would be the easiest for him to start with. Oh, look at all this rain. Galen, is this what you meant by keeping our plants watered? I wonder if he enjoys the rain just because he knows his herb garden is going to be very, very well watered indeed. This lavender seems a fitting gift for a ruler. Please accept it. Thank you very much. I wonder if this is one that Mango grew? I could see her offering up some of her lavenders to Galen so we could inspect them or something. Make sure that she's growing them right, of course. Oh, I had something to tell you, but then I forgot. What was it? Oh no, Mango. Maybe it was something about our garden? We did ask her for tips, too. Well, hopefully she'll remember in the future. Oh, and Starling, look how dark it is over here. So dark and gloomy. Good thing we have so many of these bright and colorful bugs to light up his den. We know that he is a little bit afraid of the dark. Guess what, Finch? I just had my best selling day ever yesterday. The shop is really taking off, and I have you to thank for it. If you hadn't made this den here, I don't know where I'd be right now. That's good to hear. I guess that means that some of our cats in the feather colony were snooping around his shop. I wonder what they decided to buy here then. Some mice to set aside inside their den. His herbs, of course. Maybe even a different coat color. Starling is definitely the cat to go to if you want a nice fancy new coat. I know we've seen most of these before, but they just look so, so gorgeous. 
especially the zebra color and the regal color too. This one reminds me of a leopard from Pokemon. We haven't even purchased the traditional style from him yet. I think we ended up going with the Highland style since he was the one selling it. So maybe we'll have to come back to him in the future. Maybe even one of our cats around the colony would enjoy a nice new home. I wonder if Slate would like something different than just this big pile of rocks that she has right now. There is no replacement for a good friend. That's why I hope you'll continue to visit me every day. Well, of course, Slate, and you know what? Let's give her this rare black hair. We found the Skidrana right outside the colony the other day, and we know that you love them very, very much. We're probably so close to getting that fifth star with her soon. Hello, my leech. I have discovered a gold ore, which I would like for you to have. Ah, so Claudius has been back in the mines? Well, you know, we should probably tuck that away somewhere. Maybe over here by our little leader's stump. That way, when we go back into the mines to work for the moles again, we'll make sure we bring that to get a couple extra mole bucks. Now, Griffin, our selection of frogs were a little bit scarce yesterday, but we do at least have one frog to share with you. And I think that Finch is probably going to stick with the licorice roots today. It's been a while since he's eaten these himself, so that should fill him up nicely. We're going back down to the prairie today, Griffin, though, and we're going to see if we can catch you some more. Rain's good for concealing your location. Footprints wash away, and the sound of water falling can keep others from hearing you. And I'm not just talking about prey. Don't you worry, Griffin, we're going to keep an eye on our backs. We know that there are quite a few battles out that way. We have some battles in the Prairie North and by the Blossom Lake. So it seems like these cats are not too happy that we're pushing deeper and deeper into their territory. But we're going to be super careful. And we know that Slate won't mind helping us out if we do get into a little bit too much trouble. Actually, since we just found some Valerian, let's do our daily patrol, but a little bit faster than we usually do. We'll scoot right past all these mice grab the lavender along the way, and just circle through the territory here. That way we should gain a little bit of influence just for being in the area. I'm almost starting to think that it might be a good idea for Finch to sneak his way into the mountain colony again. It's been a long, long time since he last used that old disguise of his. And with the festivals coming up soon too, maybe Finch is getting a little bit curious about Leo's plans. It would be nice to know what sort of resources our enemies have at their disposal. And poor Finch, you are having a terrible bunny hunting day. I guess it must be all of this rain, and I hope that's not going to make it harder for him to hunt down the frogs too. Because like I said, I would imagine they are going to be hopping absolutely everywhere. It must just be a little bit too slippery for him to hold on to those rabbits. Oh, but this little mousie, you are going to go right into our stomach. Because I think that battle is right below us too. So go ahead and eat the field mouse. And then get ready to battle the Mystic Colony. I would imagine that that's probably who's going to be waiting for us here. Oh, this is the Mountain Colony? Ah, they're out awfully far from home. I figured we would probably see them over by the Blossom Lake. But not over here. Oh, Rose, thank goodness we have somebody to help us down here. We should be able to take out the rest of these cats, no sweat. There we go. Thank you very much, Rose. I'm glad that you were wandering around here. I guess she probably wasn't part of the patrol, but she just happened to be passing by, probably on her way back home thanks to all of this rain. Rumor has it we're gaining a lot of territory lately. Wonder why that is. Well, it could have something to do with Finch's hopes and dreams for his future, to possibly welcome some new life into the Feather Colony, but I guess that's probably still quite a ways off, so Finch is probably keeping that on the down low. For all our cats know, we're just spreading our influence to make the Feather Colony the mightiest in all the land. The Forest Colony is pretty hard to compete with, though, especially after all of Penny's contributions. She really made world domination seem easy. Now get on out of here, little squirrels. We're only here for the frogs. Oh, was that a toad, perhaps? It looked like a kind of greenish-looking arrow. Maybe it was just a squirrel after all. I don't see anything up here, Finch. We seriously need to work on your tracking skills. Any other frogs out here? There's not many arrows popping up at all. I wonder if it's just harder in general to find prey around the forest when it's raining like this. 
Oh, I swear, Finch, you are not normally this rusty when it comes to hunting. It has to have something to do with this rainstorm. Of all the possible days for it to be raining like this too, when we desperately need to bring back some more? Some more frogs. Oh, Gunther, you scared me. I thought for sure you were an enemy. They say we need more food in the colony for the coming months. I'm out here to make sure we get enough to eat. Well, this is an excellent place for you to do so, but not if you scare away all of our delicious morsels. Yeah, that was that arrow again, and it seemed to be pointing toward the squirrel. So that must have been what that color was for. But this one is definitely a frog. Those bright green arrows are exactly what you're looking for. Oh no, Finch! Oh, if only you were a little bit faster, you could have caught up. Maybe if we had the sprint skill at the ready, that would be a good way for us to catch the frogs when they run away. I mean, they don't hop that fast. I wonder if we even just popped a little valerian on Finch, if that would be enough to close the gap. I think it's pretty clear what Finch is going to be doing for the rest of the season, though. He is going to be frog hunting. In fact, we might leave Finch to catch more frogs until the summertime rolls around. We've seen the spring festivals and all the festivals between so many times now. I'm not sure if it's getting too boring for you guys, so let me know if that's something that you still want to see, or if we should skip it and carry on with the news story. And oh, puppy, of course we would have a Mystic Colony cat coming after us now. I'm actually going to leave you because I did want to sneak my way down to the Mystic Colony campgrounds. That way we can give them their catnip before it gets too late. Here you are, Oracle. One nice, fresh catnip for the Mystic Colony. And now our reputation is at 57%. So we're definitely getting there. There's still quite a ways to go, but that catnip is a wonderful way for us to start. Now catnip, I would imagine, is probably a very, very difficult plant for any cat to keep in the garden. So I'm not sure if Finch is going to be skilled enough to grow any catnip in his spare time. But maybe when Griffin finally does decide to move in... Maybe that's something we could ask him about. And look at that, now we're gaining a little bit of luck. Two frogs in our pocket after all. Maybe the swamplands are just easier for him to hunt in in general. Who would have thought? The swamplands and the highlands are very different places to live. You would think that he'd be more accustomed to hunting closer to his actual home. Well, either way, Finch, three frogs now. Griffin is going to be over the moon. And of course, we'll have you scoop up those golden seals too before we pack up and call it a day. One last sweep for any potential frogs, but it looks like that may have been the last one. Yeah, now we just have mice down there, so let's go ahead and warp back home. I think you've had enough excitement for one day. I can't really see Finch being the type to enjoy trampling around in the mud and rain anyways. Now, did we gather up enough golden seals to plant just one more plant in the garden? I think we actually did. We have exactly six golden seals. So let's go ahead and add one more right next to this one. There we go, Finch. Your little garden is coming along. Maybe not quite as impressive as something that Griffin could do. And I know that Finch is very well aware of that fact. Griffin's gardening skill is one of the many, many things that leaves Finch in awe of his new love. So for the next few days, we'll make sure that Finch stocks up on plenty of these little frogs, and we'll make sure that he takes good care of all of his new garden plants too. The golden seals are coming along nicely, but I wonder if you would get curious about his berries? Maybe it's time for us to even take a trip to the forest colony like we were planning to, and see if we can scoop up all of the raspberries that we know are in their territory. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!